And the last way that we use is the area of effect. And I'm actually going to use a story from programming to talk about this. I'm going to talk about a time when I was at a client and we were working, I was working with the client or one of the programmers from the client on their database. And we did something and we messed up the database. And so we spent the next 50 minutes or so fixing that mistake so that it would go back to normal. And when we did fix it, I all of a sudden heard a whole bunch of people say, oh, it's working now. And I looked at the person I was programming with and I said, is everyone on the floor using the same developer database? And she nodded her head and she's like, yeah, we, we all run off of the same development database. And so that 50 minutes that, you know, really should have been me and my, my coworkers wasting two hours because of that mistake, it ended up affecting an entire floor of 50 people. And so I lost an entire week's worth of work because I took out everyone else as well. And so it's these three things that we're going to primarily focus on that are going to make it so that when we make mistakes, not if, but when we make mistakes, they are going to be cheaper. So let's start with mistake number one. Now, the story I'm about to tell you is fictionalized. Names have been changed, and the stories have been aggregated from a bunch of stories. Now, you might think that I'm talking about a company you know. I am not. But it's a familiar story. And this story starts with our company, Acme. And they get what is the best of all situations. They have a client who comes to them and asks them to build a product. It's a point of sale product to help them sell in their different locations. And not only do they say, we are gonna pay you to build this for us, but we were given the rights to resell that product to other companies once we are done. So we're gonna get paid for development and we're gonna have a product we can sell afterwards. It's a really good situation to be in. And so they're on one side of the country, we're on another side. We fly out there and we start to gather requirements, all the different things we do. We have lots of interviews, we talk to lots of people, we put together this big thing. And then we come back home and we start to program it. And, you know, they're interested. There's a whole bunch of money at stake here. Um, so we set up, after four months, we're going to have them come out and we're going to give a demo to them. And they're going to see that we do good. And everything is going great. And they fly out. And we do our presentation. And we show them what we've built so far. And everyone's happy. Everything's working. And at one point in there, one of them says, well, what about purchase orders? And we say, oh, no, no, you don't handle purchase orders. In fact, in, in our requirements, we looked, we said, all your transactions are cash up front. And, and, you know, God bless them. They actually nod their head and say, oh, yes, all our transactions are cash ups up front. Except every once in a while, we get these very large orders from the military. And those have to be purchase orders. And we try to explain that those aren't the two th things, that when you do cash up front, it's a much simpler system. You don't need to track. There's no credit. There's no billing. It, it's a totally different situation. And, and they just start to get mad, and then we get madder, and they said that, like, this system had to work for them, and we said that they never said it would do this. And it's really getting ugly, except, fortunately, we have a sales guy. And our sales guy, he knows exactly what to do. He, he calms everyone down, and he looks the client right in the eye, and he says, it's not a problem, we can do that. And so we send them home, and me and the other programmers sit down, and we basically start to completely scrap and reset up the program to handle a much more complicated system. 
So first of all, let's talk about what the mistake is. So remember, the mistake isn't what would have prevented this. We're going to accept that we are going to make mistakes. We need to know what actually went wrong. And in this case, if nothing went wrong, that meeting would have gone really nicely. It didn't go nicely because we misunderstood one of the requirements. This is okay. But now we need to say, if we're going to make these mistakes, how are we going to make them cheaper? And I think it's pretty easy to see the three options here. Detection is what is going to make this particular type of mistake cheaper. So let's take a look at the timeline here. Here we have the place where we did the requirements and over here four months later where we did the demo. I think you can see had we detected here it would be cheaper or here it would be cheaper or here and it just keeps getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper as you go down until it gets right into the place where the requirements were detected at the first place. That would have been the cheapest. And so the first agile practice that I want to talk about is on-site customer. An on-site customer is the idea of having a customer there with you on site, either literally on site or highly available, multiple phone calls a day. And the idea here is detection. The closer your connection to the customer, the quicker you're going to detect when you've misunderstood what they said. So eventually, we cleaned up the old mess and we we're scheduling for them to come out and demo again with the new product that had been reorganized. And everything was going good until 